Welcome, sisters and brothers in Christ, to the Chrism Mass of 2019. This year, we are at St. Joseph's Church, Upper Bukit Timah. This Chrism Mass is being live-streamed on live.catholic.sg. So if you have family or friends who can't be here with us, they can follow the Mass online. Concelebrating with Archbishop William Goh will be priests from the Archdiocese of Singapore. These comprised diocesan priests as well as religious priests from different congregations. Societies and orders like the Orders of Friars Minor commonly known as the Franciscans, the Society of Jesus or the Jesuits, priests from the order of preachers or the Dominican fathers, priests from the Skirt Mission, better known to us as CICMs, the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, or the Redemptorists, the Order of the Scalcid Carmelite Fathers, the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary, priests from the Prelatia of the Holy Cross and Opus Dei, the French Missionaries of MEP Fathers, Priests of the New Catechumenal Way, Heralds of Good News, Congregation of the Disciples of the Lord, Carmelites of Mary Immaculate. There will be very several important and significant differences at this Mass that occur only once a year in each diocese throughout the world. Today, all priests and deacons will affirm their ministry by renewing the promises they made at their ordination. Also, in the fullness of the priesthood, which comes from the bishop of the diocese, priests and deacons will renew their pledge of obedience to the bishop. And in our case in Singapore, this collective action manifests the unity of the clergy of the Archdiocese with our Archbishop, Most Reverend William Goh. The other significant feature of the mast is the blessing and consecrating of earls used in the pastoral and sacramental life of the church. One of these three oils, the oil of holy chrism, gives the reason why today's mass is called the chrism mass. At this mass, the bishop will bless two oils, the old of catechumens, the all of the sick, and he will be consecrating holy chrism. The feature of oil in both the daily and spiritual life of people is well documented in scripture. Used in cooking in our day, it was similarly used by the people in the Bible as well. And not only in cooking, but also as fuel for keeping lamps alight and as healing cells in medicine and homeopathy. Oil is used to make one's appearance bright and beautiful, as well as to prepare bodies for burial. In the spiritual life, 
Old was used when offering sacrifices, when consecrating the meeting tent and the Ark of the Covenant, and when God makes a choice of someone to lead his people. In the 16th chapter of the book of Samuel, the young David is anointed by Samuel as king over Israel. And when Jesus opens the scroll of the prophet Isaiah in the temple, as he Jesus echoes the words of the prophet saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me. Oil then is symbolic of bringing one sanctification, wellness, strength, beauty, consecration, and sacrifice. The old of the sick is used in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, where the priest administering this sacrament anoints the forehead of the person as well as his or her hands. Other parts of the body may also be anointed if one's hands are not accessible. The priest is also able to anoint the part of the body that is in need of healing. The oil of catechumens is principally used with the sacrament of baptism, which will take place in many churches all over the world at the Easter Vigil Mast. The elect will be anointed with this immediately before baptism. Some of the elect may have been anointed with this oil during the period of the catechumenate leading up to that baptism in two days' time. The oil of chrism will be used in the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. These sacraments impart an indelible sacramental character on those who are anointed with holy chrism. This oil is also used in the dedication ceremony of a church where the bishop anoints the altar together with the walls of the church in 12 places that are marked by crosses. When the bishop consecrates the holy chrism, which is mixed with the perfume, he will breathe over the vessel containing the chrism, a gesture which symbolizes the Holy Spirit in recollection of Jesus' actions in John 20, 22, when he breathed on the apostles and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The consecration of chrism all remind those marked by it of the life-giving nature which the sacraments associated with holy chrism bestowed on those who are anointed. During the consecration of holy chrism, the concelebrating priests will extend their right hands towards the chrism as the bishop prays the consecratory prayer a sign of their union with their bishop and their sharing in his authority by which Christ himself builds up, sanctifies, and rules his body, the church.
please stand
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. So, my dear brothers and sisters, with great joy this morning, we gather together, the priest with the bishop, and with His Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Marek, and all of you who have come here this morning to pray for us priests and to celebrate the gift of the priesthood. And so, we want to give praise and thanks to God for our priests as well. And most of all, we want to pray that for us priests, we will become better ministers of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously granted being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God to comfort all those who mourn, and to give them for rashes a garland, for mourning robe, the oil of gladness, for despondency, praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. David, my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, Oh, my Father, my God, the rock, who saves me.
a reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests, to serve his God and Father. To him, then, be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Lazarus where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. My dear 
brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear Reverend Fathers and Monsignors. In the first reading from Prophet Isaiah, the Lord said, You will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout all the nations. And all who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, it is a great privilege to share in the ordained ministry of the church, to be a priest after the heart of Christ. It is indeed a very high calling for unworthy people like us, sinners, and yet the Lord has chosen us to be his priest. But my dear brothers and sisters, such a great honor also demands a grave responsibility. One cannot have honor without responsibility. This is something we need to remember. I'd like to share with you a video clip that someone sent to me. It is a life true life story of this former Secretary of Defense. He was once asked to give a talk at a very big conference of 1,000 people. And he went up and gave that talk. He didn't follow his script. He went up to the rostrum and he took a styrofoam cup. And he looked at it with the coffee inside and he smiled. And he said, you know, my dear friends, one year ago, when I came to this venue, this same place, I was then the Under Secretary of Defense. Someone fetched me from the airport right to the hotel and even fetched me to my room. And next morning, when I came down to the lobby, he was there waiting for me. And he fetched me to this venue, through the backstage. And then when I reached there, they offered me a cup of coffee that they was made of ceramic. And he said, but this time when I came here, I'm no more the defense secretary. This time, I had to take my own taxi from the airport to the hotel. And when we reached the hotel, I had to carry my own bag to my bedroom. When I came down the next morning, there was no one to greet me. I had to take a taxi to come to this venue. And when I came, I couldn't find a place. I came by the front gate. And I reached the conference, I asked, may have a cup of coffee. And someone pointed to him at the little corner there, go and take your coffee. And there was a styrofoam cup, and he put on the coffee. The point, my dear brothers and sisters, he said is this. You know, when I was the Undersecretary of Defense, People look after me. They took care of me. They made sure I had everything that I needed. But now I'm no more the Under Secretary of Defense. It was a different treatment altogether. I was almost completely ignored. And this shows, he said, when people give you honor, it is not because of you. It is because of the position that you hold. Without the position, 
you will not be respected. You will be treated like everybody else, as an ordinary person. And so, for us priests, we are given great honour. But remember this, the honour is not given to us as persons. It is because of the office that we are holding. And therefore, people treat us well because we are priests. The day when you are no longer a priest, or even so, if you are no more active in the ministry, the day when I retire as a bishop, I don't think people will care for me. Maybe a few. I would also be passed on as history. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, this is an important lesson for us to learn. Because today, as we celebrate Christmas, we are serving the Mass of the priesthood. Today, as we gather together as priests around the bishop, we want to review and renew our priestly promises. And within this renewal of our priestly promises, we will also have the blessing of the oils for the use of our ministry. But my dear brother priest, I think it's important for us to try to understand what exactly does it mean to be priests of the Lord and ministers of God. Very often, in a Catholic tradition, ministers of the church are better known as priests. You call us priests. In the Protestant tradition, the ministers of the church are called pastors. They are not called priests, hardly. And what's the reason? Because we are called priests because we are ministers of the sacraments. And that's the reason why we promote priestly vocation. Because without priests, there are no sacraments. And sacraments are necessary for the building of the church. So priests are indispensable for the growth of the Christian community. But my dear brother priest, we need to be careful that we do not reduce our ministry merely to dispense the sacraments. We are more than that. A priest who only is concerned about the sacraments have not lived out the fullness of his priesthood. It is interesting that in today's first reading in the gospel, we are told that a priest, as defined in the first reading, a priest of the Lord, a minister of our God, what is his work? To bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord. So, the ministry of dispensing sacraments, celebrating sacraments, has to be understood in the context of the larger picture, which is the proclamation of the good news. The good news of love, of mercy, of compassion. The good news that brings about healing, reconciliation, freedom, and justice. So this is the work of the priest. There is nothing in the first reading of the gospel that defines the priesthood as one that dispenses sacraments. In fact, even the first reading in the gospel, there is no mention of oil that we were blessed at the Christmas. It is alluded to, but not specifically mentioned. What is alluded to is priests are the anointed ones. Of course, we know Jesus, he was not anointed by any holy oil. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. For us, we are anointed with holy oils. 
so that we can share in the messianic spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having understood this, therefore it is important for us to recognize that when we celebrate the sacraments, sacraments are meant to be celebrated in such a way that give life to our people, that they bring healing. They cannot be celebrated in a routine manner, in a perfunctory manner, as if just by serving sacraments, the fruits of the sacraments are immediately accessible. And this is always a temptation for us priests, because we celebrate sacraments so often that sometimes we don't pay attention to what we celebrate and how we celebrate. We know very well some of us, even during the Eucharistic celebration, we can fall asleep and can miss parts of it. And some can even jump to the end from the Eucharistic prayer, jump right to the end and give the blessing. And I think this is where it is important for us to remember that when we celebrate sacraments, and this is where the always comes about, the sacrament of baptism, of confirmation, sacrament of holy orders, they are meant to empower us to live the life of Christ. They are meant to empower us to be witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ in the world. The sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of anointing of the sick, they are meant to heal, to liberate people, not only from their sicknesses, even from their emotional pain. The sacrament of reconciliation, such a beautiful sacrament, which is connected with the sacrament of the sick. Again, sometimes for us priests, we just have to ask ourselves, do we really celebrate the sacrament in such a way that at the end of the celebration, people feel that they have encountered the mercy and love of God? We can celebrate sacrament reconciliation again in a perfunctory manner. We just say your sins and we forgive you and you please get lost next. Or to people, when they listen to us, they can feel that we feel with them we feel for them, or sometimes they feel judged, humiliated by the way we become their confessors. And so, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear brother priest, today the celebration of Christmas invites us to really <clears throat> think through what we are doing. That although we are called to be ministers of the sacraments, at the end of the day, the real calling is to be a sacrament of Jesus. The sacraments are only means. They're important to help us to minister to the people, to heal the people, to strengthen the people, empower the people. But they're only means. At the end of the day, is before we can really administer the sacraments, we have to ask ourselves, are we the sacrament of Jesus? That for me is an even more important reality. If we use all the sacraments, but we ourselves are not the sacrament of Jesus, then the sacraments that we minister to these people will be ineffective because they cannot see Jesus in and through us. And so our great calling as we celebrate Christmas and we want to grow to be holy priest, then we really have to ask the Lord, am I a sacrament of you? And we know that the sacrament of holy orders means that we are configured in Christ. We have to be shepherds of the heart of Jesus. So do people see us priests of compassion, humility, selfless service, people of dialogue, people that are sensitive to the sufferings of others. You know, my dear brother priest, we all know very well what the church is going through. Because of the scandals committed by priests, from bishops, cardinals, right down, it has brought the church shamed. And we are all distressed when we hear of such news. We won't feel ashamed to be a priest. 
Because people will look at us. The moment we say we are priests, they think we are all beautiful. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, how can we change this kind of perception of us Catholic priests? I think the first thing, we just, we should not be defensive. Let us just admit we have failed in many ways. We are not perfect. And some of our brother priests have failed more miserably. But I think there is one thing we can do. If we want to redeem the church, if we want to redeem the image of the church, what must we do? Only one thing. We just have to be people of mercy and compassion. And I believe if we project the church and celebrate the church as a church that cares for sinners, cares for the weak, the marginalized, the church that reconciles people, the church that heals. This is where the people will gain confidence in us. Let us, my dear brother priest, let us work hard. Let us be sacrament of Jesus to others so that as in today's first reading, when people see us, they can say they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. And when people see what we are doing, they could truly say, this text is being fulfilled today, even as you listened. Our celebration continues with the renewal of commitment to priestly service. We now invite all priests to stand, please. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church? which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. Amen. I resolve to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and other liturgical rites and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, holding Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Please stand. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests. That the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ hear us, Christ graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Please remain standing. Iura vid Dominus, Iura vid Dominus, et non benita. Non be 
is used in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, where the priest, administering this sacrament, anoints the forehead of the person as well as his or her hands. Other parts of the body may also be anointed if one's hands are not accessible. The priest is also able to anoint the part of the body that is in need of healing. the sick. See 
cleansed by water, let our sins be put to flight. When our foreheads are anointed, may we share your spirit's mind. The old of catechumens is principally used with the sacrament of baptism, which will take place in many churches all over the world at the Easter Vigil Mass. The elect will be anointed with this immediately before baptism. Some of the elect may have been anointed with this oil, during their period of the catechumenate leading up to their baptism in two days' time. The oil of catechumen. The oil of chrism will be used in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. These sacraments impart an indelible sacramental character on those who are anointed with holy chrism. This oil is also used in the dedication ceremony of a church where the bishop anoints the altar together with the walls of the church in 12 places that are marked by crosses. When the bishop consecrates the holy chrism, which is mixed with a perfume, he will breathe over the vessel containing the chrism, a gesture which symbolizes the Holy Spirit 
in recollection of Jesus' actions in John 20, 22, when he breathed on the apostles and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Chrism. Blessing of the old of the sick. Lord God, loving Father, you bring healing to the sick through your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray to you in faith and send the Holy Spirit, man's helper and friend, upon this oil which nature has provided to serve the needs of men. May your blessing come upon all who are anointed with this holy oil, that they may be freed with pain and illness, and may dwell again in body and mind and soul. Father, may this oil be blessed for our use in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Blessing of the old of the Catholic humans. Lord God, protector of all who believed in you, bless this oil and give wisdom and strength to all who are anointed with it in preparation for their baptism. Bring them to a deeper understanding of the gospel 
Help them to accept the challenge of Christian living and lead them to the joy of new birth in the family of your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Consecration of Holy Chrism. Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our Maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees. From the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil will bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men. And by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water. And your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priests. These two foreshadow the greater things to come. After your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan. You send the Spirit upon him in the form of dove. And by the weakness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved son. In these, you clearly fulfill the prophecy of David that Christ will be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that chrism takes its name. And with chrism, you've anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who have been born again at the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam. And when anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation. For those who be born again of water and the Holy Spirit, may they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
We'll now continue with the liturgy of the Eucharist. Please be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is all in us, and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is through the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant, and by your wondrous design, were pleased to decree that His one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people He has made His own, but with a brother's kindness, He also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery, through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments, as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, the College of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faiths. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord 
Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall Gentle reminder, Holy Communion is only for baptized Catholics. If you wish to come up for a blessing, place your two hands over your chest.
Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. So, my dear brothers and sisters, before we conclude this celebration, first, our grateful thanks to His Excellency, uh, Archbishop Marek, for joining us for this celebration. He's a very busy uh, nuncio. He's traveling Vietnam, Singapore, Vietnam, Singapore. And so we pray for his uh, fruitful apostolate in Vietnam, especially. Also, our special thanks to all our priests here. Um, you know, our priests are actually very hardworking. Huh? <laughs> and uh, if I were you, don't make judgment. I don't like to say one priest is lazier than the other or one priest is more hardworking than the other. Because you do not know. Some of them have health reasons. Some of them, they have uh, their own struggles in life. So, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, please be compassionate to our priest, you know. All I know is that many of them, I mean, if you can see it from external, they are really hardworking. In fact, they are more hardworking than me. Day and night, they are, you know, uh, working, preparing talks, reaching out to people. And so... My dear brothers and sisters, uh, we should be grateful for our priests and I really um, ask you all to be more um, indulgent with us, be more forgiving. Yeah, we all priests, uh, we want to be holy, we want to be compassionate like Jesus, forgiving, loving, humble, selfless. We want to be all this, you know. But you know, we are human beings. Huh? Sometimes we are a bit impatient, a bit agey, irritable, like you all. Uh, <laughs> so, to, so please be forgiving because we are trying our best. And uh, if we fail you, yes, we like to ask forgiveness, honestly. I'm sure we know we are sinners. But at the same time, you know, I try to encourage our priests, encourage us, because we are human beings too. When you see the good we do, try to encourage them. Because I think uh, as priests, we are simply serving you. Huh? We are just serving you. We are just uh, here for you. And... Uh, it is really for the service of God. And we have the intention to serve. And so I ask you to continue to give support to our priests and show them the appreciation, love them, and most of all, forgive us. Uh, forgive us. Be forgiving, uh, because we are very forgiving as well. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because I also want to express my thanks to really the priests, because... They have really helped me a lot, and many of them have made tremendous sacrifices. And, you know, without the priest, the bishop is useless, honestly, you know. One bishop is useless without the priest, and the priests are collaborators of the archbishop then. So, uh, I'm, so to all the priests, I just want to say happy anniversary to you, and thank you for your devotion, your dedication, and please forgive me for those times I failed you. Uh, maybe not very... Understanding at times and uh, not uh, so available at times, and yeah, because sometimes I must say la, I must confess la. Sometimes I'm frightened of you, you know. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes uh, you know difficult issues. I want to talk, but they are very difficult la. <laughs> you all know la, but. Uh, I thank God because the priests are really, to, I mean, they have really given uh, their best. And also, I want to thank also the parish of St. Joseph Church as well, uh, Father Peter Chang, and all the volunteers, uh, community ministers, everybody, the choir who sang so beautifully, and all those who have made this celebration possible, and all the other logistic preparation as well. So, to one and all, thank you very much. 
and also we want to thank those in the video, the art production, and all those people involved in filming this uh, for those who are not able to attend. So thank you, thank you. And finally, also, I want you to continue to pray for our elderly priests. You know, our priests are all getting older. Of course, no one is getting younger. <laughs> But uh, they're getting older and uh, many of them are not too well. And Father Christopher Lee, he is resting up there. You know, he had uh, uh, some kind of fall. Huh? I do not know how to say it. Anyway, uh, so we just pray for him that he will recover quickly. And he's a little bit weak. That's why he did not come for the long celebration and long homily of the bishop, of course. So the, he, he won't come. So the, he's up there. Well, yeah, we will see him afterwards. Anyway, so pray for Father Peter Chang. Father Johnson he is recovering after a long time in hospital, but he's recovering now in the Bethany East. And the other priests are okay. They are okay. Uh, uh, elderly, uh, they are surviving. <laughs> And we continue to pray that they will enjoy their retirement uh, as priests and they continue to make themselves useful. So, so to one and all, thank you so much and thank you for your prayers and for your support. Thank you. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Bow your head and pray for God's blessings. Father, look with love upon your people, the love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed us when he developed himself to evil men and suffered the agony of the cross. Run this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.